Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 18th May 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at the two commodities, oil and gold. They tend to impact related stocks. In general, when swing trading stocks, we like to take the trades in the direction of the market. We'll study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market break and technical analysis of market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with market's direction, we like to align them with industry strength. We will study that using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum. You may access the forum from our homepage. It is open to the public. And I keep on sharing stock analysis using fundamental analysis, technical analysis, as well as industry rotation analysis. We call this Q360 degrees analysis. I keep sharing such analysis almost every day in the forum using live systems. We will also try to identify potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. We will now move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop template and daily entry or hop on template. Together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. If you remember my previous webinars, the market roundup webinars, you would know that when price came to these declining memory resistance trend lines in the weekly chart, since then I expressed caution and suggested not to take any long trade unless price could break above these resistance trend lines. That was timely analysis because since then price hasn't gone up. First the backdrop candle color turned yellow, then it declined little bit. The backdrop candle color has remained yellow or neutral this week as well. This week's candle shape is bullish. It has a long lower tail. However, it is very close to a memory resistance line. You wouldn't look for any buy setup unless price can go above this resistance line. In the daily also we see indecision. It is moving inside a triangle pattern bound by memory resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom. Other than memory support, price is also being supported by white and yellow direction lines. Looking at so many supports just below current price, it appears that oil may not go down easily from here. 
instead if oil can break above the memory resistance line you may look for a low risk buy setup gold etf gld using weekly daily at a glance template in the weekly chart price is coming down it is in a downtrend price has resistance from the memory trend line this week gold tried to go above the memory resistance line however failed and ended the week with a bearish shape as well as bearish color candle because the weekly is bearish you are not going to look for any long trend when you look at the daily chart you don't see any clear trend price is generally coming down we know that from the memory resistance line there is support from the wide direction line and also from watermark support level because the daily is not showing any clear trend you wouldn't look for any short setup as well from commodity analysis we move on to market breadth analysis we are studying market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts along with three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume because this study is using broad indices and weekly interval you may use it for longer term investment decisions also for swing trading but not for day trading in the weekly charts we have red candles in both nyse and nasdaq for two successive weeks this week's candle shape is indecisive for both the indices though the color is bearish red over longer period both the indices are in an uptrend however our trading decisions are made at the right edge at the right edge both the candles are of bearish color and you may not look for buying opportunities right now the internals are also bearish five of the internals closed below zero only one the new high low for nyse closed above zero overall the market breadth is bearish let's see what information we can gather from market etf analysis S&P 500 ETF SPY using weekly daily at a glance template In the weekly chart price went above the watermark resistance level and then came back below that That created a false upside breakout When price was going up at that time in the market round up I had expressed possibility of such a false upside breakout and that indeed came true. The weekly candle color is now bearish for two successive weeks. In the previous week the weekly candle shape was indecisive. This week's candle shape is also indecisive. In the daily chart price came down from the upper boundary to the lower boundary level then it recovered a bit and tilted down again on this friday if price now comes down gives us a magenta flow color candle in the daily chart that would create a go with flow short trade opportunity however there is a memory support line close by you may not take any short trade unless this memory support is broken 
NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ. This also created a false upside breakout at the watermark resistance level. Something that I discussed in my previous weekly market roundups. QQQ also has bearish candle color for two successive weeks. This week's candle shape is indecisive. Last week's candle shape was also indecisive. In the daily chart, similar to SPY, price came from upper boundary to the lower boundary, recovered somewhat and then tilted down again on Friday. If QQQ gives a magenta flow color candle in the daily chart, it will also give a trend following short trade setup. However, you may not want to short QQQ unless this memory support trend line is broken. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA again weekly has bearish color for two weeks and the candle shape is indecisive for those two weeks. Daily again came from upper boundary to lower boundary, recovered somewhat and tilted down. DIA doesn't have any memory support nearby. If next week it gives a magenta flow color candle in the daily chart, that will signal a trend following short trade setup. Russell 2000 ETF IWM again weekly has given bearish color candle for two weeks. Candle shapes are indecisive. In the daily price came to the lower boundary, recovered somewhat and tilted down again. On Friday it gave a bearish magenta flow color candle in the daily chart. That met all the requirements of a trend following short trend except that Friday's close was very near the memory support line. That wouldn't give attractive reward risk ratio and you wouldn't take any short trade at the end of Friday. Next week if price can go below the memory support line then you may start to look for low risk shorting opportunities. If not in IWM, in small cap stocks that are fundamentally overvalued and that are in weak industries. You can assess those easily using Q360 degrees analysis. One month sector performance. We are looking at 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of the current week, green bar performance of previous week and blue bar performance of two weeks before that. This week nine of the sectors decline by significant percentages and only two sectors went up. The two that went up are in defensive sectors. These are utilities and real estate. The worst performing sectors are materials and information technology. Not so long ago, the market made new all time high. How far? At that time, I was mindful of the possibility of a false upside breakout. That indeed came true using that anticipation and the sector rotation that was showing weakness. I identified several shorting opportunities and I shared them in our traders forum using live 360 degrees analysis. Most if not all of them ended up with very high profit. If you used Q360 degrees analysis, you could also make significant profit during this time while others were probably 
still bullish. Let's look at one of the recent shorting ideas that I shared. I shared it in our traders forum. You can access the forum from our home page using this forum icon or you could go to the forum from the trade ideas forum menu. I regularly share long as well as shorting opportunities using 360 degrees analysis. One of them was about a stock in broadcasting industry. Shorting opportunity at the top in the broadcasting industry. Let's have a look at this post. I shared it on 2nd May. As usual, I attached the 360 degrees analysis snapshots at that time using live systems. This is how the industry was looking at that time. Broadcasting industry was stronger earlier. The score was in cyan color and right on that day, it weakened heavily. That day score turned magenta and the pace columns, pace one day and two day columns were showing deceleration. The industry was starting to show weakness after being strong for a while. These are the times you may look for shorting opportunities at the top as I could find in this case. The stock SSP was overvalued that was shown by the valuation being in magenta color. This is how the technical charts look like. This is SSP using Q weekly daily at a glance template. At that time, the weekly was breaking below this memory trend line support after displaying a bearish headwind at the very top. In the daily also, it displayed a bearish headwind at the very top and right on that day, it was breaking below a memory support in the daily chart as well. The drop was associated with extreme bearish pressure and the stock was at price extreme high that could give us a very low risk breakdown shorting opportunity at the top. How did the trade work out? I discussed it in the previous market roundup. This is live chart of SSP. I shared the short idea on this day. After that price went up little bit. However, it didn't hit the stop. Stop would be just above recent high. One week ago on Friday, price hit the lower boundary level and you would exit at least partial position at that time with profit. Lower boundary is our usual profit target for a short trade. I discussed this in the last market roundup and based on our 360 degrees analysis which was showing weakness in technical charts, weakness in fundamentals and weakness in industry. We decided not to exit full position. That is Q guideline. If all the forces are weak, then we like to book partial profit with discipline, but hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. That is exactly what I discussed in the last market roundup. And that was a very profitable decision because this week it dropped sharply. After the sharp drop, it hit this memory support line. At that time, you could exit some more position with very large profit. But again, you would continue to hold partial position because the chart is looking very bearish and the fundamental is still weak. The industry is weak as well. Let's have a look at the stock's fundamentals. 
and industry strength as of today. The stock SSP is still overvalued in spite of the large drop. You can know that from the magenta color under valuation column. The industry, it is also weak. 5 day column score is in magenta color and paste column is showing that it is decelerating further. You remember when I identified this trade opportunity, at that time broadcasting was just about to turn magenta in the industry rotation scorecard. I could catch the stock at the very top just as the industry was starting to topple over. And see now the industry has weakened considerably. The stock also dropped along with the industry. And once again, using Q360 degrees technique, you could short a weak stock in a decelerating industry at the very top and profit handsomely from that. Sector scorecard and heat map. This week's strongest sectors are utilities and real estate. These are the only two sectors that went up. All the other sectors went down. The weakest ones are information technology and materials. They were weak one week ago also. And in the last market roundup, I advised against buying any stock in these sectors. That was useful because these two sectors are continuing to be the weakest ones. Using this sector scorecard and heat map, if you are looking for buying opportunities, you will look for them in utilities and real estate. And you may look for shorting opportunities in materials, information technology, even consumer discretionary. That is using the strength or weakness of the sectors. Alternatively, you could use the PACE score that shows acceleration and deceleration. Sand color represents acceleration. Magenta represents deceleration. Using acceleration, you could look for buying opportunities in real estate and financials. And you could look for shorting opportunities using deceleration in consumer staples and healthcare. However, sector level is too broad to make more accurate trading decisions. You may drill down into the industry level and buy into strong or accelerating industries and short into weak or decelerating industries. You can find the strength and weakness of industries from this industry rotation scorecard and heat map. Strongest industries of this week are shown in cyan color score under 5 day period. You could look for buying opportunities in the best performing industries from this scorecard. Or you could look for them from the acceleration. The most accelerating industries are shown using cyan color under paste column. Using that approach, you would look for buying opportunities in these most accelerating industries. I tried to look for buying opportunities, low risk buying opportunities in the 10 best performing industries. However, I didn't find any attractive trade setup and when that happens you probably know that this is not the time to buy stocks you may start to book profit in any existing long position you may have and also start to look for shorting opportunities let me explain exactly what i did these are 10 of the best performing industries this week. I drill down into the underlying stocks. These are the stocks in the 
10 best performing industries. I look for buying opportunities in either undervalued stocks or in stocks with high growth. You can look for undervalued stocks using this smart filter. We have only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the stocks in that category. All these stocks went up this week between 2% to almost 8%. Let's see if they gave any buy setup. Let's look at the first stock AWK. It is in water utilities, one of the best performing industries. AWK using at a glance weekly daily template. One week ago, price closed very close to the upper boundary level. That is too overbought for us to take any long position. This week price went up further. However, we would not be buying the stock because it was already close to the upper boundary. AWK didn't give us any low risk buying opportunity and if you went through the other stocks you would find the same. Therefore the value stocks, undervalued stocks in the best performing industries didn't give us any buying opportunity. Let me remove that smart filter for undervalued stocks. I also look for buying opportunities in growth stocks. We can use this smart filter to look for stocks that are having consistent and high earnings growth for three successive years. And if I apply that smart filter, I don't find any stock. Let me reset that smart filter on high growth stocks. A third technique is to look for stocks that are showing increasing earnings growth in the latest quarter. You can apply this smart filter, thumbs up filter for that. We have a number of stocks in the best performing industries that are having increasing earnings growth in the last quarter. Some of them are having positive earnings growth. Let's focus on those stocks. Some of them went up in the current week. Some of them declined. We can focus on the stocks that went up. We are left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 stocks. These 9 stocks are in the top 10 best performing industries of this week and they are having increasing and positive earnings growth in the latest quarter. I looked at some of them and couldn't find suitable buying opportunity. Let's look at one of them IIPR. IIPR using weekly daily at a glance template. This week the stock went up, the weekly candle color switched from bearish one week ago, magenta, to bullish, cyan. This week's candle shape is also bullish, long hollow candle. However, looking to the left, you can see that it is moving sideways for several months now. That is not the time to take trend following long trades. You could look for sideways market long trades using daily chart. How is the daily chart? That displayed a bearish headwind at the very top. That top has not been breached yet. It is moving sideways. Price is bound by watermark resistance lines 
and at the lower end it is supported by memory support and also the yellow direction line. This week price went up but didn't give us any suitable buying opportunity. If you went through the other stocks in the best performing industries, increasing earnings growth category, you would reach a similar conclusion. Either the stocks are overbought, near or at or above upper boundary level, or they are moving sideways, not giving easy buying opportunities. If we didn't find any easy buying opportunity, is it possible to look for shorting opportunities? You could look for short setups in the decelerating industries. These are shown by magenta color under paste column. Or you could look for short setup in the weakest industries. These are shown by magenta color under 5 day period. I could find shorting opportunities. One industry that was of interest to me was semiconductors. This is one of the weakest industries and looking to the right, you can see the score was in cyan color, meaning the industry was strong earlier. Now it is weakening. Those give very attractive shorting opportunities, especially when we can identify an overvalued stock that is giving a low risk short point. I drill down into semiconductors. There are several stocks in this industry because the industry was strong earlier. I am going to look for overvalued stocks using this smart filter. MXL is one of those stocks, overvalued stock, shown by magenta score under valuation column. And it also has decreasing earnings growth for all the last three quarters and in fact for the last three years as well. Weak industry, overvalued stock, decreasing earnings growth. These tend to give most attractive short setups if we have a technical trade setup on Q charts. I in fact found a trade setup on MXL on Friday and I had shared it in the traders forum. Let's have a look at that post. This is the post semiconductor stock is breaking below support. I shared it one day ago on Friday. This was on MXL. Here are the 360 degrees analysis snapshots. The semiconductors industry was weak. We saw that just now also. The stock was overvalued with decreasing earnings growth. We saw that just now as well. And this was how the stock was looking like using Q technical charts just before market close. The weekly candle backdrop color was bearish magenta and the shape was also bearish. In the daily it displayed a bearish headwind at the very top from there price decline. It hit the memory support line tried to go above but on Friday closed below the memory support line giving us a breakout short setup. The relative performance line is tilting down showing it is considerably underperforming the market. This is a short setup I shared on Friday just before market close. You may keep an eye on the stock to see how it does going forward.
I will not go through the other weak industries. You may drill down to look for suitable shorting opportunities. Let me summarize the market. The broad market indices fell down for two weeks. Their weekly backdrop color is bearish. Market internals are also bearish. Most of them decline and closed below zero. Market ETFs are also starting to roll over. SPY and QQQ made new all-time high just a few weeks ago. Then it created a false upside breakout. And now for two successive weeks, the market fell. The weekly backdrop candle color is bearish for all the four market ETFs. This is not a time to look for buying opportunities. Is it the right time to look for shorting opportunities? That may be true. However, there are memory support lines in several market ETFs. In three of the four market ETFs, SPY, QQQ and IWM, all of them have memory support very close to Friday's close. You may not short many stocks until you see that these memories are being broken. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.